Um, uh, first up, about myself, um, U of A alumni uh, in mathematics and environmental hydrology. I graduated in 2013. Um, so naturally, I became just a bartender and bicycle mechanic for the next five years. Um, through that time, I was self-teaching my way through web mapping. I did a lot of GIS through college and some internships, and I just saw web mapping, uh, like modern stack, you know, application development as um, the future. So just sort of taught myself, built a few apps, and you know, in in all of that, uh, a patchwork of of internships before college and after uh, college with um, uh, Watershed Management Group in Tucson, the USGS on campus, the World Resources Institute in DC, um, my own organization, uh, Tucson Pathways, um, and I currently work as a software developer um, for a Palo Alto-based startup. But today I am presenting on behalf of Trufi, um, volunteering and presenting um, their really awesome work. They reached out to me and there's, uh, I just have a lot of interest and passion for exactly what they do in, um, in uh, making transportation more equitable, especially for the developing world. So yeah, so Trufi, um, as, a, as an organization, they're, um, they're a nonprofit set up a few years ago, started in uh, 2018. Um, that's pretty much entirely remote, but with a, a core group in Germany and in South America, but more uh, staffers have come aboard in Africa, but they're all over the world, um, just connected through Zoom meetings and, and such. And um, uh, their mission is to improve tr uh, public transportation worldwide with focus um, on the developing world with focus on, um, on cities and villages that have very um, informal transportation networks. So, uh, um, and so yeah, their, their staff, um, more than uh, 40 some members and volunteers, software developers, uh, community advocates, uh, GIS analysts, and um, uh, across countries all over the world. Um, and uh, they're coming together to try and tackle um, informal uh, transportation as an issue. So a lot of us in the developed world um, take advantage of, of the resources that we have for public transit. I mean, we have a very formalized network of public transit, even in a city like Tucson, you know, bus schedules that, that more or less run on time and that are very formalized in, in their structure, in their routes, in their design, in the city government that, or the state government that administrates them and, um, you know, goes through all of the best practice as best they can to, you know, create formal transportation networks for people to get around. Um, it is not like that in a lot of regions in the, developed, in the developing world. Uh, you have um, bus routes, transit routes, uh, pirate taxis that are all just, that have, that aren't documented anywhere. They run daily, but they aren't. There's no documentation. There's no way to know unless you're just a local citizen and you know the um, and you know your own community well enough to know where it, where a bus stop comes in in a day. Um, so, and again, that that is typical in in South America, Africa, and uh, Trufi is is um, trying to digitize and improve that space. So, how are they doing that? Um, it, well, it's quite a bit of a process, but the end, the end product is this Trufi app. It's available um, on, on uh, Android and iOS devices. Even in the developing world, like smartphones are a common enough technology to where it, it, that is uh, more accessible than, than, you know, than you'd think. And uh, so basically what, you know, what we take for it, for granted with something like Google Maps, there's, there's no capability of that in, um, currently in, the, in regions of the developing world. So 
uh, route planning, um, uh, suggested routes, being able to drop pins, being able to set destinations. Um, and I'll demo the app uh, briefly at the end, but um, the app really is just the icing on the cake. It's really what I'm presenting about is really the full scope of work that it takes to get there. Um, so, you know, while there is the app, they, uh, Trufy does have, um, uh, does have, you know, services for um, maintaining these apps, for staying involved with the communities that they're developing these apps, to train uh, people in these towns and uh, uh, to, that, that are map developers, that are OpenStreetMap contributors already, and um, growing their skill sets as well for, uh, for a lot more, um, uh, you know, technologies to, um, for a lot more technologies to map uh, uh, their, their cities and towns. Um, so right now, um, the Trufy app is launched in these key locations. You know, they need to, they need to digitize these informal transit networks um, uh, through a lot of brute force, you know, data collection and data scrubbing and processing the data and loading it into apps. So as it stands now, there actually should be, I think, I thought there, oh, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, I was like, where are the rest of those spots? I thought there were a few more. Um, but yeah, the app is launched. Um, uh, let's see, I'm going to be talking about Nuwak Chat uh, Mauritania in the coming slides. That's where the most recent work has happened. But uh, as you can see, um, the app is launched at regions throughout the world. It's even uh, it also, I believe, in, um, let's see, Hernberg and Hamburg, Germany. They even uh, regions of, of, you know, the developed world of, of Germany use this app and the local city governments um, uh, use, use this tech and support it um, because it is so comprehensive. It's, uh, it's a, quite a bit of data collection that they go through. Um, so the steps for going through this, as you imagine, um, collecting the bus route data, digitizing it, um, you know, uploading it to OpenStreetMap. From that, then creating the GTFS. That's the um, oh, I'm sure someone in here remembers. Google Transit Spec. Yeah, it's 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 the it's the you be, it, it is the go-to spec for public transit routing data collections that that hundreds of applications use for you know organizing their data in in. Um, in a common way that, that a lot of technologies can use. And then finally taking mapillary photos of those routes, so like the equivalent to Google Street View, which maybe people know mapillary is another, um, uh, I believe the open source version of that, uh, of that. You may need to fact check me on that, but, but it's, a, it's, a, it's another form of like kind of street view. Um, so the process, uh, the typical process that they do was not possible during the pandemic, as you would imagine. They can't fly into these local regions, um, doing, it, uh, doing it on the ground with community building is normally step one of this process. So they had this goal for Nuwakchot, but they had to do it, um, they had to do it all remote. And this is what I think is one of the biggest things that I'm really impressed with with Trufy um, and just their organization. It's really just a demonstration of, of you know, adjusting through a pandemic and um, making it work. And I really just think that um, uh, developing this process and having to do it all remote with people, um, you know, just zooming in together and communicating from their locations all over the world just to, for the data collection in uh, Mauritania, that's the green country in the center there. But, um, you know, that's no easy feat. A lot of different time zones, a lot, a lot of stuff, and, but most importantly, just the fact that they have to do community organizing remotely, training uh, personnel remotely, and I really think that that's um, an impressive feat uh, um, by the team. But yeah, on the ground, um, uh, local uh, volunteers and uh, OpenStreetMap contributors um, in these villages and towns 
Uh, they were put into contact with Trufi. They would go through training sessions. They would ride um, the buses with um, you know, their GPS activated, recording the routes, uploading them, uh, uploading them to Mapbox, or, or excuse me, uploading them to OpenStreetMaps, um, going through the data scrubbing, making sure that, uh, that the GPS tracks are, are, um, are snapped to actual roadways, manually digitizing in the places that these buses are stopping, naming the roads, the routes, um, you know, all along the way. And that's all, you know, a lot of that is the volunteers on the ground and um, really impressive work that, uh, that they were um, able to do through a pandemic just to get this data available to build it into the app. So um, it, truly impressive work. Um, as I said, yeah, the data would be um, uploaded to OpenStreetMaps. They would, uh, you know, like whether they're uh, pirate taxis or small van buses, um, you know, this is very informal transport. But, um, you know, it's make, it is bringing this data into the light of, of the digital age, of something that everyone can access. And then finally, um, uh, so they would, so after riding all of these routes, I believe it's somewhere around like 60 bus routes, um, just 11 hour days of, of riding. And they would then um, rent, uh, Trufi would pay for them to rent a car to redrive the, uh, the route, recording, um, uh, taking, screenshots uh, taking screenshots along the way of, of the route with GPS activated and uploading that to Mapillary to create like Google um, uh, Street View imagery with it. So um, yeah, the local connection, uh, local collection was not possible, but despite that fact, they were able to collect all of this information and it enables them to remote map their next city. Um, I do want to show the app in person. I downloaded it myself, so it doesn't work for Tucson, but I'm still able to um, load it up for uh, Cochabamba. This is in what, Bolivia, South America. Um, and as you can see, you know, this all looks pretty typical to us for, you know, what we're used to, but this was completely unavailable to these world and you know available in multiple languages um, in local languages it has an ability to uh, link into the Trufi community uh, through through Facebook but really this is the meat and potatoes of it um, all of these routes had to be uh, you know manually digitized processed um, uploaded the data scrubbed uh, and loaded in to um, to this application that's built in Flutter. And as you can see, there are a lot of, of routes. And um, th again, this is all very informal transport routes. You know, they could be uh, micro buses. I believe there's even gondolas um, that I thought was uh, pretty interesting and cool. Um, beyond that, let's see. Um, oh, skip ahead there. So if you wanted to, you can set uh, a home location, um, you, and then uh, if, if you needed, you could set work destinations. It has uh, popular recent destinations, but right now, if you were to set a destination, maybe like the airport, then generates a route and based on that informal transportation network and uh, multiple options, you can click between them. Um, you can load up all of the individual route information for how to get there. All of the services that we take for granted, but this was completely unavailable for the developing world. And let's look at what uh, the trillion dollar company, Google, um, would be able to provide for this region. So setting up roughly equivalent locations, can't find a way there. Um, so it really goes to show that this is, you know, this is a first step, you know, this is a first step in um, a much larger process. You know, there is a spectrum of, of, you know, how online certain data is. You know, the, the end goal of getting to the live map that has all current information from 
bus routes to, to you know, garbage routes to just, you know, um, how crowded certain bars and restaurants are. We're all sort of slowly inching our way towards that live map, that living map. And this obviously is um, an early step for these developing, uh, for these um, cities and villages that have informal transportation networks. But the fact that they are now quite literally on the map uh, with this information and that uh, Trufi has built this app, um, uh, it is, it's, it's an I think it's quite impressive. So um, thank you for your time.